Hi. So let us study about something which is very fundamental, which is very basic property to the nucleus. Okay. Now, if you remember your uh, chapter on the model of hydrogen atom, the atom it is called, then you have some idea about binding energy, right? Because we have studied the binding energy of the hydrogen atom. So essentially, if we talk about the electrons, the binding energy is the amount of energy you will supply to the atom in the in its ground state, in this very lowest state. And if you supply that energy to the electron, it will go to infinity. It will go, you no, know, basically it won't have any interaction with the atom. So we get something called free electrons. Now binding energy, in, uh, when we talk about the nucleus, is very similar. So say you have, this is the nucleus of your atom, okay? And then you here you have some protons, okay? the P, P, protons, 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 and you have some neutrons in it, okay? Now these are contained tightly with the help of, that's right, strong nuclear forces. Now what happens is, if we, if we provide enough energy to this, to our nucleus, then we'll get, so we supply energy to it, we, what energy, we'll see that, and these become free of each other, okay? So essentially we'll have free nucleons, P, so we have others as well, and these become Essentially binding and this energy which we need to supply to it is called binding energy. Okay, so if you want to think about it, binding energy is the energy which frees nucleons from the cruel world of the nucleus. <laughs> okay, that's one way to think about it. Now, how do we describe it mathematically? We know an equation, a very famous equation, you might have seen in book covers in rather than, you know, E is equal to mc square, all of you know this. And energy is mass times the speed of light square. Now we are going to use this and see what the binding energy really is. So, we have this, this thing right over here, it's the atom, it's a mass. It has a mass, so we'll, let us call this. Is a, let us say that is a mass m, okay? And say the element is x, so we can you know, obviously write z. If it, it has z number of protons, in other words, it, its atomic number is z, and its mass is z plus n. As now as n is the number of neutrons. This is the element, and See the number and number of protons will not change. So there is no conversion of protons to neutrons or neutrons to protons. So there is no beta plus or beta minus decay here. And of course there is no electron capture. Again we will have Z protons and N neutrons. Okay, fairly simple. Now how do we relate these two? See the thing is the rest mass energy. Okay, because mass is associated it has some energy to it of a nucleus is lesser than the rest mass energy of free nucleons okay so we have the let me write this down free oops, nucleons okay now what is the rest mass energy of this this nuclear uh, this nucleus right over there so again, it's of course it's m c square where m is the mass of the nucleus. So plus some binding energy, let us call this b. Okay, it is equal to. Now what is the sum of all the masses of these protons? If the mass of proton is m p, okay, it's one point zero zero seven two six seven six. Uh, you know some atomic units, and there are z of them. That's a mass of protons. And what is the energy associated with it? The rest mass energy associated with each of them. That's C square. So that's the mass times the speed of light square. Plus, how many neutrons are there? So mass of neutron is Mn. 
there are n of them so that's the that's the total mass of all the neutrons that are present and we multiply that with the speed of light square the, this is a equation then we can modify if you modify this correctly then we get b our binding energy equal to so we the mc square goes on the right hand side and we can take out the c square in common so we get z times the mass of protons or number of protons and the mass of protons plus n m n the number of neutrons and the mass uh, mass of each neutron minus the mass the rest mass of the nucleus times the speed of light square this is one equation which you can get which you can use okay it's uh, it holds very good another way to put it is in terms of the mass of the atom itself so mass of the atom i mean nucleus plus electrons how do we go about it well it's easy so say b will be equal to again z something like this it's a square bracket mass of hydrogen atom okay mass of hydrogen atom plus number of neutron number of neutrons and the mass of neutrons minus m okay minus m mass of our atom our atom over right over there and what is how do we represent it we can represent it as x okay the symbol z z plus n the mass is z plus n okay and then we multiply the entire thing with c square this is this is also a valid equation now what is happening to the electrons well if you notice z number of hydrogen atoms so say two hydrogen atoms will have two electrons with it because a hydrogen atom has one electron with it so z will have z electrons with it and if you talk about the atom okay it has z protons okay but it also has z electrons z number of electrons so that it let us say you're talking about uranium so it has 92 electrons with it and 92 hydrogen atoms will have 92 electrons so the mass of electrons effectively is cancelling out so we have zm mass of hydrogen minus mass of the mass of the atom okay and these electrons mass of electrons will cancel out so these two both of them so you can use both of these these are equivalent so if you are given the mass of hydrogen atom you can use easily use this and if you are given the mass of protons you can easily use these equations so that's how binding energy and the equations of binding energy work so and applications of course you are uh, the applications are later when you study beta dk beta plus dk and the similarly a similar sort of thing is q values the difference between the energies of the fi in initial state and the final state what are they we'll see so thanks for watching and i hope you like this video and next time we'll discuss another very in interesting topic of physics